Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Divergent Observer. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Apparently, Tesla was sick of hearing everybody rag on Optimus and the teleoperation at the event, so earlier today, they released a new video. Just in case a few of you haven't seen it yet, I am going to play it, but without the sound, because there's music. Just to point out a few things, you'll see in the top right this autonomous badge for certain clips. But the clip for walking up the stairs, that badge went away. But Ashish, who is an engineer at Tesla, said none of the video was teleoperated. And Julian, who also works at Tesla on Optimus, said none of these shots are teleoperated. And now I'm playing this video back at 0.25 speed, but we do need to remember that they did say Optimus was actually walking on its own at the Wii Robot event, and teleoperation up the stairs would be quite difficult given the weight distribution for the teleoperator would be much different than Optimus. I thought the charging bits were pretty interesting, clearly they're going the wall charger route, so Optimus has a camera basically on the back so it can hook up to this dock by itself, and actually it looks like this hook allows Optimus to rest on it so the actuators can turn off. In another part of the video, they did say they were having some overheating problems, which was was likely from the actuator, so this would help alleviate that to some degree. A lot of people were expecting wireless charging for Optimus, maybe through the feet, but apparently that's not the plan for now. You can see the light on the head of Optimus likely to indicate charging, red for low, green for charged, white for operating normally, and they may have some others that were just not in the video. And if you watch the bottom right hand corner, you'll actually see that rear camera on the back of Optimus so it can actually see the charging port dock. You'll also see this mini map, I like to call it, yes, I used to play a ton of Call of Duty, where Optimus is navigating through this brand new environment. It looks like the green in the visual are humans, so Optimus is learning to maybe be extra cautious around humans. If you zoom in a bit here, you can see green dots everywhere. That's apparently how Optimus is perceiving its environment and helping with depth perception. Optimus will be able to communicate these point cloud maps of the environment to others in the fleet so they can work together to map their surroundings. I'm really waiting for a similar feature with the vehicle fleet, the ability for cars to communicate with one another for real-time traffic data or potholes, new construction, etc. And the video says later, Optimus can tap into these for navigation, implying some recall. Picking up this tray of 4680s, it apparently weighs 11 kilograms, which is right around 25 pounds. And if you pause, you can see Optimus is basically holding this thing with its fingertips, really just applying pressure through its shoulders and arms. And we have to keep in mind that this is probably a generation 2.2 of Optimus. It's really gen three that they're expecting to go into production with. So this version does not yet have the new hand that we saw at the Wii Robot event. I don't know how much it's really doing, but in this scene where Optimus is actually handing out some chips and drinks to people and responding to their gestures, Optimus is attached to a safety cable. If you look at this part right here, it's almost as if Optimus releases or opens its hand right before this person goes to grab the bottle. So are they doing it based on vision and not really a tactile sensation? Either way, I have to be honest, I really was not expecting this level of progress right now. 
On X, Milan did share a post about this video. He said, we've also started tackling non-flat terrain and stairs and Optimus started learning to interact with humans. We trained its neural net to hand over snacks and drinks upon gestures and voice requests. And he said all neural nets currently used by Optimus run on its embedded computer directly, leveraging our AI accelerators. I did wanna add, don't forget, this teleoperation tech is probably going to be the way that Optimus is able to collect all of the real world data that it needs to eventually become autonomous. Without Tesla learning how to do that very well in many different environments, how else is Optimus going to learn from the real world? Yes, they can watch video footage, but as we know, the real world is different. So I know everybody wants to rush to the point where teleoperation is out of the picture completely. Just don't forget, it's a critical piece of getting Optimus where it needs to go. And it is going to take a little bit of time for Tesla to do something that's never been done before. Just know this narrative that's now out there that teleoperation is somehow easy and basically erases any progress we're seeing is just not true. Tim Zaman, who used to work at Tesla said, teleoperation is a hard requirement for a lot of imitation learning. The quality of the imitation is constrained by the quality and functionality of the teleop. Even if Tim was using the word hard to translate to necessary, again, that's just my point earlier that this is how Optimus gets to where we want it to go. Translation, the better Tesla gets at teleoperating these bots across a diverse range of scenarios, the faster they gather the data they need to learn to do it on its own. As I said on X, there's at least a chance that Optimus could have done a lot of what we saw at We Robot autonomously. It's just Tesla decided to have the human assistance to make sure everything runs smoothly and the guests remain safe. Because remember, the team only had three weeks knowing that Elon wanted Optimus as part of his presentation. So most likely Tesla wasn't faking Optimus to try to prove it's further along long than it really is, it can actually do a lot of these things autonomously already, it just took the safe route. So if you think about it, in a sense, Tesla really was kind of sandbagging when it comes to how far Optimus has actually progressed when it comes to autonomous operations. Now look, I'm obviously not a robotics expert, but I try to keep up where I can, and you just don't have to be an expert to look back just two years ago to see when Tesla had Bumblebee and to see how far Tesla has come in just the last two years. I mean, honestly, going from this clunky behemoth on the left to that video we just watched in two years, if you ask me, that's incredibly impressive. So far, Tesla may already have over 100 Optimus built and operating in some capacity. Again, they talked about around 1,000 by next year. By the end of this year, they should have the new hand ready for production. So the 1,000 number for next year should be Gen 3 with the new hand and maybe some other updates that we don't yet know about as well. Honestly, before this video today, I was pretty skeptical that Tesla would have anywhere near 1,000 Optimus bots doing useful work at its factories by next year year, but after this video, I think there's a real chance they have at least maybe dozens of these doing real jobs by the end of next year. Maybe not anything groundbreaking, but like these guys in the background that are just standing there sorting batteries, I think Optimus will be able to do that and maybe carry them to the next location. Most of you probably are not tracking this, but more and more people are waking up to what's going on across the internet. Few people realize just how deep the data collection goes when it comes to data brokers. And the rise of AI poses the risk of even more personal information being scraped from the internet. And even worse, a majority of Americans, 73%, think they have little to no control over what companies do with their data. Luckily for all of us, that is not the case because companies like Delete Me exist. And yes, they're the sponsor of this video, but they are an easy way out of this terrible situation. There are thousands of data brokers with new ones popping up regularly. That means without Delete Me, you would have to look up and call each and every one of these companies, request a removal, and then follow up on that removal. And then somehow you have to constantly stay on top of new data brokers when they come up. It's totally impractical, which is why Delete Me has become so popular. They do all of that work and then some for you. They're an American company and this is all they do. They remove all of your personal info from all of these sites, they send you reports reports quarterly and they constantly monitor for new data brokers to ensure your personal info stays off these sites and is not being sold around the world. This time around, Delete Me reviewed 5,719 listings and removed 25, saving me over 74 hours of work. 
You can see right here in October, it looks like a bunch of new data brokers have popped up. In the report for each broker, they tell you the status of each removal, whether it's in progress or whether it's clean and the next scan is upcoming. So if you'd like to protect your family's information and support a great US-based company, you can get 20% off at joindeleteme.com slash electrified linked below. Just use my coupon code electrified and you'll be good to go. Or if it's easier, you can use the QR code right on the screen. Tesla Charging just announced they now have 60,000 charging stalls around the world. For context, Tesla announced 50,000 on September 7th, 2023. So in the last 13 months and three days, Tesla deployed an additional 10,000. Doing the math, that's about 769 stalls per month. Assuming 10 stalls per site, that would be roughly 75 sites per month. Hopefully posts like this continue to alleviate some of the fears about Tesla's supercharger network stalling out after the layoffs earlier this year. Heinrich Zane gave us a nice update on the Tesla Semi. He believes these eight semis toward the bottom left of the screen right now are new right off the production line, and he's estimating that in total, there may now be north of 200 semis produced total. Pepsi may have their 100 already ready and these new ones are going to new potential customers some for testing and of course not just testing for other potential customers but some of these will likely stay with tesla as well for in-house use so we may be as high as 250 Tesla semis produced in total, and he did say they may be at a rate of around four per day, which was up from around two per day before. If you're not yet following Heinrich Zane on Twitter and YouTube, I'll have his information linked below. He's far and away the best source we have right now for Tesla semi updates. To all of my Canadians, the Cybertruck deliveries are officially beginning. Some customers are reporting delivery dates as soon as the end of October. Looking at the sticker for the Cyberbee, Foundation Series, the total after destination fees, 168740 Canadian dollars. As one of Sawyer's followers shared with him, some Cybertruck owners are being notified that their wheel covers are finally ready. As we said was going to happen, here's a video from rapper DaBaby in his Cybertruck using FSD, posting this to his over 9 million followers. I believe though he may have taken this video down already. Obviously this behavior is not recommended, but the point is many more people are going to be exposed to FSD through the Cybertruck and all of these celebrities that own it. Joe Tetmeyer shared a new video of Tesla's lithium refinery and an update. Here's a shot of what it's going to look like when it's done, and here's where we stand as of today. Where we can see those uh, kind of trailers grouped in the middle of the screen, that's where the groundbreaking took place back in May of 2023. So what we are seeing here on the center left-hand side of the screen is how the main plant itself is being designed. Uh, there's going to be a kind of a mirror of the items that you see on the left and it'll be in the middle where you see that kind of uh, rectangular pond at the moment. And in the distance is that large raw materials processing facility with some of the conveyor belts and we will get a much closer view of that. Now as I have mentioned on several previous videos, these large ponds that you see are not part of the lithium processing. These are not brine tanks. What they are is a kind of reservoir of water for the site since there are no water utilities out here. And they use this not only for the site itself, and there is a plant off to the left with those white trailers and some pumps, but they also use this to keep the dirt down and the dust down during the construction process. This is a nice look at the raw materials processing facility on the left. And we also see a forklift coming out of that uh, large receiving door, a pyrometallurgical processing part of the factory, and the large kind of rusty cylinder on the center of the screen is that uh, rotating kiln. And you can actually see some of the uh, mounts and the bearings that it is sitting on. And that is what allows that to turn while it is uh, heating up the raw spodumene concentrate six in alpha format. It still sounds like Tesla is working on opening the first half of the plant by summer of next year. And then the second half should be done with construction sometime in 2026. Now, yes, keep in mind, this is basically one year delayed from their original timeline. But as we've talked about, the price of lithium has come way down. These projects are not as economical as they once were. And eventually the lithium hydroxide from this location will be sent to 
to the Giga Texas cathode plant for use there. At this point, I would say maybe there's a chance we get a low volume of production sometime by the end of next year, but if not, then definitely into 2026. Slower than we'd like, but it is quite the operation. And Joe, if you see this, thank you for the work. This video was shared on TikTok. This girl was summoning her Tesla from a parking garage, but I believe her vehicle was already on the ground floor, but it made me think, would this work if your vehicle was on a story two, three, or four? So I wanted to pose the question, have any of you tested that yet and if not I may have to go find a parking garage and find out for myself. We have some more promotions for Tesla. Milan Kovats has been promoted to the vice president of Optimus up from the director of Optimus and autopilot engineering. The Wall Street Journal also said that Omiad Offshar who joined Tesla in 2017 is now vice president in charge of sales and manufacturing with senior execs in those divisions now reporting to him. He has assumed some responsibilities formerly held by Tom Zhu, Tesla's senior vice president for automotive, who in May earlier this year went back to China. In Omiad's new position, he will still report directly to Elon. His LinkedIn job experience still just has Tesla for the past seven years and two months with the cowboy hat emoji. This guy is definitely one of the more mysterious Tesla employees. It's almost like he really is the fixer for Elon. It's been reported that Omiad has also held roles at SpaceX and X, and he also over saw the construction of Giga Texas. I'm sure many of you will remember that report about the glass house that Tesla was apparently buying special material for, for a house for Elon. And the word was that Omiad was the guy behind planning all of that. That whole thing turned into a whole lot of nothing, but it is indeed the same guy. Rivian and RJ Scaringe posted a little teaser. It looks like they're trying to do it big for an upcoming software update, their Halloween version, and they've brought on David Hasselhoff to help debut it but they did say these spooky features will only be available for a limited time. There was a report that Apple had been working with BYD secretly for years and that they really helped BYD with the Blade battery that now BYD uses for basically all of its EVs. But again, what does Apple have to show for all of this work? The answer is apparently not much. They said Apple does not own any of the tech used in BYD's Blade batteries. And BYD made it clear they hold complete property rights and patent rights for the Blade battery. But the pack design was informed by lessons from the Apple work. After months of trying, Audi is coming up empty trying to find a new buyer or a new solution for its Q8 e-tron factory in Brussels. None of the 26 interested parties and potential investors has offered a viable and sustainable concept. Now they're saying it's likely that the 3,000 or so factory workers will lose their jobs. This could become the first VW plant to close in Europe in its 87 year history. The reason for the closure? Poor demand for the Q8 e-tron. Ford is offering a new incentive scheme for dealers, but the main takeaway here is Ford is looking at a new distribution model for its electric vehicles. Ford is looking to use these RRCs or rapid replenishment centers. Just think of them like a middleman between the factories and the dealers, a quicker, easier way for dealers to get access to electric vehicles as they need them because dealers will be able to get EVs from these RRCs within seven days. The RRCs are spread throughout the US, allowing dealers to reduce floor planning costs by stocking fewer EVs and giving customers quicker access to a bigger selection of inventory. Tesla stock closed the day at $220.89, down 0.2%, while the NASDAQ was up 0.04%. It was another quiet volume day for Tesla, trading about 28 million shares below the average volume the past 30 days. Don't forget, if you're interested, check out Delete Me linked below. Take your privacy back for you and your family, and if you do, thank you in advance. Hope you have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.